to something. But then you're up to something. Scandalous. And we are back. Let's get our guests back over here. I love that, man. All right. <laughs> Y'all got commercials and carrying on. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we're, 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 we're a TV show, man. <laughs> Trying to be like you and we hey. are. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cinematic. Okay. Go, <laughs> this is what we do. This is what we do. We like to keep the people entertained, encouraged, right. educated, and, you know, just have fun. I modeled this show off of our senior hall and Tonight's show with Jimmy Fallon and Saturday Night Live. Mm -hmm. I love it. So, uh, cinematic. You got one more. You got another question. You said, "Yeah, well, one, Keenan, you're a legend. Um, if enough people don't tell you enough, let me be the next, and hopefully not the last." You, you <laughs> are, <I got> it. <laughs> thank you, man. Um, yes, sir. My question was: Did earlier you was you you were talking about? You know, we gotta get our shit together. A lot of people probably took a like a, a gasp, like, oh, Keenan said shit. Oh no. Like, <laughs> you, you're, stop laughing, y'all. <laughs> His vocabulary is very varied. Family yeah. friendly mm -hmm. brand. Do you have you ever felt like that stifled any level of your the creativity or anything that you wanted to come out with? Because people maybe only see you as babyface Keenan? Not really. Like, I don't really have a problem going with what works for the audience. You know what I mean? Because I did. I don't know if y'all ever saw the movie that Lee Shriver did um, where he played the, the guy that Rocky was based off of. It was like a boxing movie or whatever. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I did a scene where I was uh, Don King, like young Don King, you know, at a press conference or whatever. And as soon as I popped on, like when they were testing the movie, as soon as I popped on screen, like people started laughing before I even said anything. And then that like got me cut out the movie basically because it's not a comedy, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. it was straightforward. Mm -hmm. And it, like, it really took people out of the reality just seeing my face. So like, I'm aware of the, it ain't even, I don't even want to call it a burden, you know what I mean, of like doing a lot of clean comedy up until this point or clean material up until this point because I kind of cherish, you know, when old ladies come up to me and, and they spot me and they like they know me, you know what I'm saying? And they're like, hey, young man, like I know you, you do great stuff or whatever. Mm -hmm. And everybody else, you know, underneath that. So it's just it's a wider audience. You know, and it's a much more tedious audience, but it's a it's a bigger audience. You know, it's it's kind of like, you know, I I do work for kind of anybody, and that you know definitely feels good. It definitely feels like, you know, I have more options at the end of the day. So like, if I wanted to like do my version of Minister Society or one of the movies that I grew up loving, you know what I mean? Just as a black man growing up in Atlanta, kind of thing. Like we love gangster movies or whatever that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with the brand that I established. And I don't want to necessarily like diminish that just because I might want to, you know, do a shoot em up or something like that. I don't know. You know what I mean? Like I ain't really tripping like that because I've matured enough to understand, you know, like the monetary value of the wide audience, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, Kevin Murphy, who is the uh, owner of KDS Entertainment and co-owner of Blurred Station, he says, what genres are you looking to branch out into? I, honestly, it doesn't even really matter. Like, I don't personally have to branch out anymore as an actor. Like, I'm fine staying in the lane that's been kind of carved and, like, people enjoy. But at the same time, I'm, I'm trained, so I could do whatever. You know, I can do horror. I can do drama, like, you know, in high school. You know, our theater group, we used to write our own plays, but the plays would be about like, you know, South Africa and apartheid and like, you know, teen AIDS or like teen drug addiction and stuff like that. So like very, very serious topics. But like, I know I can go there. It's just, what is the audience willing to receive? And then like, do I need to take baby steps before I do, you know, whatever the Robin Williams Photoshop movie where he was a serial killer and like, we all accept oh. You know what I'm saying? Like we watched that movie, and it's like I'm not looking at Miss Doubtfire. I'm watching this movie as the character he's portraying, kind of yeah. thing. One hour photo. One yeah, hour one hour photo. photo. Thank you very much. Yeah. 
so, uh, Health Spawn Cosplay. He said, what's the process of getting feedback from, from the focus groups? He says most folks don't know why they get cut from another. Uh, the process is amongst the producers, basically. Like, they're, it is, it's damn near like a two-way mirror. Like, they're on the other side, like, looking in on these people. And then the people get asked, a, you know, a couple few questions at the end of the movie or whatever. And they're watching and listening. And, you know, they gauge it from there, basically. Um, but yeah, it's not really like a put a letter in the mail kind of thing. It's it's like they're right on top of them. They just don't know they're being watched kind of situation. Mm -hmm. That's not creepy at all. <laughs> no. Far from it. No. Far from it. 